In the last video, we learned how to assign RRS absolute configurations to chirality centers. In this video, we'll apply the same concept to cyclic compounds. So if I take a look at this cyclic compound, I know that this carbon right here is my chirality center, or my stereo center, or my stereogenic center, or whatever you want to call it. This is an sp3 hybridized carbon with four different groups attached to it, different paths around the ring. So this is my this is my chirality center right here. So the question is, is it R or S at this chirality center? And to figure that out, we need to draw out this molecule again and show show a few more of the bonds. So this is my this is my chirality center carbon right here, and this is directly bonded to a carbon on the left, and that carbon on the left is bonded to two hydrogens with uh, a carbon down here, and this carbon down here is bonded to two hydrogens and another carbon like that. So if I go around to the right side of the ring, I know that my chirality center carbon is bonded to this carbon, which is bonded to two hydrogens. Going down, this carbon right here, which is this one, is bonded to a hydrogen, and it's double bonded to this carbon down here. And when you're assigning R or S, it's, it's helpful actually to pretend like this carbon is actually bonded to two other carbons, when in reality it's double bonded to the same carbon. But it's going to help us when we're, when we're trying to figure out priority for our groups. Also bonded to my chirality center is my methyl group here, so I can go ahead and put in my methyl group with the hydrogens. And then I also have a hydrogen going away from me in space. So now I have all all four of my groups, and let's see if we can assign priority. The first thing that I do is I look at the atom directly attached to my chirality center. So there's a carbon directly attached to it, there's a hydrogen, there's a carbon, and there's a carbon. I know that carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So immediately, hydrogen is going to be my lowest priority group out of the four here. So I can go ahead and assign a four priority to hydrogen. I have a tie with these three carbon atoms, so if there's a tie, you have to keep on going. So if I, if I look at the atoms that are directly connected to, to those carbons, well, the top carbon is directly connected to three hydrogens. So I can go ahead and write three hydrogens here. This carbon on the left is directly bonded to hydro hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and I'm going to put the carbon first, so it's carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, since carbon has the higher atomic number. The carbon on the right is also bonded to hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, so it would be carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now, let's see if I can assign priority based on what I've done so far. I look at the first atom, which is hydrogen versus carbon versus carbon, and obviously obviously, uh, carbon wins. Carbon has the highest atomic number. So I can go ahead and say that my methyl group is third priority because it has the, it has the lowest value for the atomic number there. Now I still have a tie because if I keep going, I have comparing a hydrogen to a hydrogen and a hydrogen to a hydrogen. So I still don't know. I have to keep going. I have to go to the next the next atom here. So if I if I go to the the next carbon, what's bonded to this carbon down here? Hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. So I'll go ahead and make it carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. And what's bonded to this carbon? Carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And if I look for my first point of difference rule, once again, it's carbon versus carbon, so that's a tie. And when I get to the second one here, it's hydrogen versus carbon. So carbon wins. So this one wins for highest atomic number. So I'm going to assign a number one priority to this path around the ring on the right over here. And the path around the ring over here will get a two priority. And now I can go ahead and assign an absolute configuration. So if I if I go back over here to the drawing on the left, I said that it's it's number one priority going around to the right. It's number two priority going around to the left. The methyl group gets a third priority and I can ignore the hydrogen since it is going away from me in space. So this would be going that way, which is of course clockwise, and therefore the absolute configuration is R. So this would be R. All right, let's do another one where we're assigning an absolute configuration to a cyclic compound. So here I have a molecule called carvone. So this is called carvone, and carvone has one chirality center, and it is this carbon right here. So this is my this is my chirality center. So what is the absolute configuration at that chirality center? Once again, it's it's helpful to draw out 
um, all of your atoms. So if that is my chirality center, I'm going to say that represents my chirality center like that. And as I go up, that carbon is directly bonded to another carbon, which is bonded to two hydrogens like that. And then I go over here, and this is my carbonyl carbon, right? That's this carbon right here. And it is bonded to a carbon on the right, and it's double bonded to an oxygen. So I can use the same trick as before. I can pretend like it's bonded to two different oxygen atoms, even though it isn't. I go back down to my chirality center, and let's see, coming out at me, what do I have coming out at me? I have a carbon directly bonded to another carbon, so now I'm right here. And that carbon is bonded to a carbon up here, and it's double bonded to a carbon down here. So once again, I can pretend like there are two carbons down here like that. As I go around this way, I know that my chirality center is bonded to another carbon here, which is bonded to two hydrogens. And that carbon is bonded to another carbon over here on the right. And this carbon is double bonded to that carbon. So once again, I can pretend like it's bonded to two different carbon atoms. And there's also a hydrogen bonded to that carbon. So now that I've drawn everything out, let's see if we can figure out the priority of the groups. I also need to add in my hydrogen here, so which is going away from me, so that's why I didn't really need to even think about it. But that hydrogen is going away from me, so that I can automatically assign that as a number four priority. I guess a four priority because once again we are comparing the atoms directly attached to your chirality center, so carbon, 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 and hydrogen. So hydrogen loses and gets a four priority. Once again, I have a tie. I have all these carbons here, so I need to look at what is bonded to those carbons. So what is directly bonded to the carbon on the top here? It's hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. So it's carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. What is bonded to this carbon over here on, on, on the wedge? It's carbon, carbon, carbon. So I have carbon, carbon, carbon. And for this group going over here on, on the right, what is bonded to this carbon? It's hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. So I, I can go ahead and write carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Let's look for the first point of difference. Let's look for the first point of difference. Well, I know that if I look at the carbons, they all have a carbon to start with. So that doesn't help me much. Next, I look at hydrogen versus carbon versus hydrogen. Well, immediately, I know that carbon is going to win. This one right here is going to win because carbon beats hydrogen. So this group coming out at me on the wedge is going to get a number one priority. So this group is going to get a number one priority. And if I keep going, I can see that it's a tie for these other two groups. So I have to go on to the next carbon. So let's go ahead and move on. And let's look at what is directly bonded to my next carbon. So this carbon, this carbon right here, well, there's an oxygen, oxygen, carbon. So that would be oxygen, oxygen, carbon. And this carbon right here gets carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So what wins out of those? Well, I have oxygen versus carbon. Oxygen has a higher atomic number than carbon. Therefore, I can say that this top group is higher priority than this bottom group. So this top group would get a number two, and the bottom group here would get a number three. So when I go ahead and uh, put those in up here on my drawing, I know that this group on the wedge got a number one when I assigned priority. The group up here with the carbonyl got a number two. And this bottom group over here got a number three. And the hydrogen going away from me got a number four. So if I'm going around, if I'm going around this way, right, because it's going one, two, and then three. So I'm going around clockwise. So this is R. So this is R carvone. So let me go ahead and write that here. This is the R enantiomer of carvone. And let's see if we can draw the mirror image. So if I want to draw the mirror image of carvone, I'm going to reflect this molecule in a mirror. So let's go ahead and think about what we would get if we reflected that molecule in a mirror. So let's see if we can draw a mirror here. All right, so something like that. And I know that my methyl group is going to be here. I know that this is connected to my ring. So I can go ahead and draw in my ring like that. 
And if I'm reflecting it in a mirror, my double bonds would go here, my carbonyl would go here, and then this would be the carbon which would have this group coming out at me. So this would be this would be the enantiomer to R carvone. So this should be S carvone. So let's go ahead and write S carvone here. And let's go ahead and assign priorities and let's double check and make sure that it matches. So I know that this group coming out at me got first priority. I know that going this way got second priority. Going this way got third priority. And I know there's a hydrogen going away from me, right? There's a, there's a hydrogen going away from me, so that's fourth priority. So which way is this going? Well, it's going this time, it's going one, two, three. It's going, it's going counterclockwise. So this is S. So we've just proved this does represent the dot structure for the enantiomer, uh, or S carbone. Now, remember, there's another way to, to represent, uh, to, to represent the, the, the enantiomer. I could just start with the original drawing. So another way to represent S carbone would be to start with the original drawing here and put in my, put in my groups. And all, I, all I'd have to do is change the, uh, change the wedge to a dash. So if I changed the wedge to a dash, then I would get this molecule. And this should also be S carbone. So these, these two molecules are equivalent and, and, and you can practice and convince yourself of that. Now, the interesting thing about R carbone and S carbone is they are enantiomers of each other, but they actually have different smells. R carbone actually smells like spearmint. So let me go ahead and write that. R carbone is actually the smell of spearmint. And S carbone is the uh, is the smell of caraway seeds. So nature nature is chiral, and receptors in your nose are also chiral. And the fact that these two molecules give you different smells tells you that these enantiomers actually bind different receptors in your nose and have different smells. So nature is three dimensional, and that's one reason why studying stereochemistry is so important.